When was the last time you saw someone shoot one of these? Maybe you've never shot one yourself. This is a Nikon FE 35mm film camera, and I absolutely love it. So what's the difference between 35mm and yesteryears compared to digital photography today? Stick around and let's find out. The way 35mm film is much simpler is that we focused more on the composition. There really wasn't a lot to this camera. It was pretty simple. Put the film in, make sure you don't mess up, select the correct ASA scale or ISO scale for your film speed. So I'm shooting portrait 160. I want to make sure that my ASA is set at 160. Other than that, getting the film in and you know make sure you get it wound in right, there really wasn't a lot to it. Put your lens on. And, you know, when I was young, I didn't have the option of, of a lot of different lenses, but today I do. And this is a 35 to 70, which, you know, gives me a good, uh, actually, yeah, 35 to 70. But uh, I need to shoot this more often. But, you know, you could just come out and concentrate on what you were shooting. And I think today with cameras on the market, there are so many options that, that one has to choose from. And it makes you focus more on the camera itself and less on the actual composition, less on what you're actually doing. And being out here in the woods and enjoying myself and just kind of walking around and, and you know, it's fall, it's beautiful. And I can really focus on, uh, no pun intended, but I can really focus on the subject rather than focusing so much on the camera. And I think that's the real big difference between film and digital is, is really the, the marketing of these cameras now. And it's really got everyone thinking more about the camera and less about the composition. In fact, we spent a lot of time thinking about the film and what film we were gonna choose. And so when I was thinking about this area and what time of day I was gonna be shooting, all that factored into what film I was gonna shoot. So, you know, I wanna capture some of the colors and the vibrance of the colors, although it's not spectacular out here, but anyway. Portrait 160 is a good film for that. And the speed 160 allows me to get, because I knew it was gonna be handheld, although I did bring the tripod as always, but um, I figured, you know, well, if I'm handheld, I need a shutter speed that's gonna allow me to shoot between the focal ranges of 35 and 70. And so I needed a lower ASA to do that. And I think all those considerations are done in advance. So when you're out here, it's just you and nature. I mean, really, and that's a good thing because you're not thinking about all the camera settings and everything. You're just thinking about the composition and your experience. And I think that we've lost that today with, with all the cameras and the marketing. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I like my Nikon D850 and I like it a lot. And I, I, I use it way more than than film and i remember when digital was coming out and i i swore i'd never go digital because i mean film just seemed tangible it was something that you could put in your hands unlike digital it was kind of a pixelated computer image and i think that's the way a lot of people looked at it i know i did so film was was more of of a creation you were you were exposing a negative and capturing a moment in time that was etched on this negative that could later be taken to the dark room and developed. And there, there was a whole, whole experience with developing your film, whether you did it yourself or whether you, whether you sent your film out. And I can remember sending my film out and excited. You know, did I, did I, did I get the right exposure? Did I capture the images that I, the, the compositions that I was looking for? And I had to wait a little bit. To, to get that film back. And sometimes you could do overnight, you know, I think it was, uh, I forget what it was called, single day film, one day film, but uh, you know, you paid a little bit more, but I remember it being six or $7 to get my film, a, a, an ex a roll of 12 or 24 exposures and the excitement of getting that back. And, and then I would thumb through those images in print and wow, what an experience. And you get the negatives back. You could look at your images with a magnifying glass on your negatives and, and you had those negatives forever and you could do what you wanted with them. You could file them and I, I still have many negatives that now I could scan or do whatever I want with and I still have those images on file. Now, granted, I gotta keep that in boxes and other things and digital is much more convenient in that respect. But I'm just saying, it just seemed like film we were creating something, something special.
Although it seems like there's a lot to shooting film, there was a lot of information on this lens. For example, your depth of field. You could see there's scales here, your infinity range. You could select infinity much easier on these lenses than you can nowadays because the lenses nowadays, they focus past infinity. I think it's Canon that says uh, thermal, thermal expansion in their, their lenses, so they allow you to focus past, past the infinity mark. And so it wasn't so easy just to come out here if you wanted to focus on something in the distant background, I could easily turn this lens to the hard stop, infinity mark, and I'm, I'm ready to go. You can't do that with the, today's lenses. You'll focus past infinity and your distant background will be blurry. So something to think about. Also, you had to be mindful of your, your aperture and where you were and what you wanted to achieve with that. But it was easy to kind of set it and forget it. And you can put it in auto, set your aperture, and you're ready to go. The camera selects the shutter speed for you. One of the other things that made film so different is that, you know, we, as I mentioned earlier, we selected our film, our film speed, our film type. Were we going to shoot color? Were we going to shoot black and white? If you're going to shoot color, are you going to shoot ektar? Are you going to shoot portrait? There were plenty of film options. Surprisingly, there's a lot of film options today too, but once that roll was in, that was it. You were shooting it. So most common, I like the 12 exposure rolls because I could shoot a roll of 12 and then change. Now you had to change film, but really that wasn't a big deal, changing film. So if you have some cool little attachments like this eye cup though, I find it easier to take off my eye cup when I swap out film, but nevertheless, it really wasn't that big a deal. Now, the, the bad side was the 36 exposure roll. That was nice, but 36 exposures? That's quite a bit when you're thinking about every single shot and every shot counts. You can't just spray with digital images and then go back to processing and just select the images that you wanted. You had to make them count. So that really made you focus more on your composition because you knew you were going to pay for that film, then you're going to pay to have it developed. And you wanted a roll of 36, you wanted every photo to count. So, yeah. You know, I was talking about today and digital cameras and the marketing that goes on with that and, and how complicated it is to select a camera. I mean, I get questions all the time. What camera should I use? What's the best camera for landscape photography? I'll link a video to that at the end of this too, by the way, I think you should check that out, but interesting anyway. But yes, I mean, but if when I think about the film days, the camera body was pretty much manual and you just exposed film and that was it. So you thought about your film and then the what really determined a good image was depth of field and the lens. We focused our energy and time on the lenses. We focused on the sharpness of the image, the quality of the lens, and what we could do with the lens, and not so much on the camera body. And I think that's, that's the thing today. We focus more on the camera body, and it's kind of gotten us away from really what's the most important thing, and that's the lens. We often ask ourselves, you know, what's the best camera for landscape photography? What's the best lens and focal length? I'll leave links. I've got a couple videos on that. I'll leave links uh, to those at the end of the video also. But focal length is a very important factor in, in selecting a camera and lens. So there's much more that goes into it rather than just a camera body. And I think if anyone today were interested, if you've never shot film, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. I think you can pick up one of these cameras. I mean, I picked up this FE. I really liked it, and so I found it uh, on eBay, bought it, pretty uh, pretty simple. I, I redid the light seals. I've got some videos, not to plug all my videos, but they are important if you're interested in one of these. I've got some videos on how to replace your light seals, and I did all that myself. But anyway, if, you, if you're really thinking about photography and you wanna get back to the basics and you're thinking about composition, I would highly encourage you, explore a little 35 millimeter film, and you can get set up for couple hundred bucks, get a lens for 20 or 30 bucks, a prime lens, maybe a 50 millimeter. Just get out and get some shooting done and get some experience with some film and, and you'll quickly see the difference. The difference that film makes, certainly the difference between film and digital. And if you haven't shot film before, you're in for a real treat. Well, that's it. I just had a little nostalgic moment today and thought I'd share it with you. So maybe uh, if you're interested in film, if you got some questions, uh, just uh, throw them out there and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. Well, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and call it. But if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified of any future videos that I post. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, 
Maybe I'll see you on the trail.